and welcome to week 12 of Organization Leadership and Decision Making. Moving right into our agenda, today we'll talk about the assignments and then the reading. First, the assignments. We've entered week 12, so during this week we'll cover information about a digital retail case study. By the end of the week, you should be able to analyze innovative concepts of digital organizations to determine the key areas to focus on to ensure success in the market. Read the required article. Week 12's written assignment. So once you've read the required journal articles, uh, which focus on how positive team culture can correct the impact of lagging leadership activities, uh, and additionally, we discuss how digital transformation leaders uh, reward regarding artificial intelligence. After reviewing those, uh, that reading, address the following prompts. What is your definition of AI? Please explain. What is your opinion of AI? Is the technology currently available? Why or why not? Please note at least four AI technologies. Explain if they are truly AI or something else. Thoroughly explain your answer. How is AI perceived as different in various industries and locations? Please explain. And do so in three to five pages in APA format, making sure that you cite your sources appropriately. You will find those sizes, those sources that you're citing uh, in either the University of Cumberland's library or through the use of something like Google Scholar. Uh, do make sure that you hit the uh, three to five page uh, length requirement and that you do follow APA guidelines. Next week, uh, we'll talk about information, uh, uh, we'll cover information about performance management. By the end of the week, uh, you should be able to understand the key concepts in performance management and how it influences effective teams, compare and contrast organizational capabilities in performance management. You'll be reading chapters 11 and 12 of the, te 11 and 12 of the text. The discussion for next week is to discuss performance management and how it influences act effective teams. The review table 11.1, define leadership behaviors in your own words, not rephrasing or paraphrasing, but explain to us in your own words. Uh, and note which behaviors are beneficial at specific organizational activities. For example, planning, uh, leading uh, co-workers, etc. Please note at least five organizational activities and be specific when responding. Note at least two organizational capabilities and compare and contrast each. This is the rubric which we've been using for our uh, submitted uh, APA type assignments. Doesn't apply to discussion boards, but for all of your individual projects. Moving on to the reading. We're into part three. Uh, managing people and leadership of the text, uh, and we're discussing chapter 11, performance management and leadership. The learning outcomes, after completing this chapter, you should be able to understand the crucial link between leadership and performance management in organizations. You should be able to explain the importance of context in the changing role of the leader and other stakeholders in historical development of performance management processes and practices and examine innovative leadership influences on performance management activities in contribution to the achievement of contemporary organizational goals. Also, you should be able to critically evaluate research on leading leadership performance relationship and explain some criticisms and paradoxes in relation to performance management. So the nature of performance management. Uh, CIPD defines performance management as the activity and set of processes that aim to maintain and improve employee performance in line with an organization's objectives. It is strategic as well as operational, as its aim is to ensure that employees contribute positively to business objectives. Ideally, performance should be managed holistically throughout the range of HR activities and processes. Another perspective on performance management, Branton and Gold define performance management as the set of interconnected principles designed to ensure that a person's overall capabilities and potential are appraised so that relevant goals can be set for work and development, and also so that through assessment, data on work behavior and performance can be collected and reviewed. So these descriptions capture several things. Managing the performance of employees is the essence of managing the employment relationship. 
uh, it is a continuous process that not only can determine reward to the employee, but also involves training and development, uh, uh, developing employees in line with organizational strategies and goals. It yields measurement that can be used to close the gap or space between what promised, what promised by an employee and what is realized in terms of work performance. So the idea here is to try to get the employees to be able to perform at their peak levels. Defining performance manager is not as easy uh, because it focuses not just on the task in hand, but also the effort, motivation, behavior, and competencies involved for the parties in the process. Techniques deployed in performance management practice in, is vital in businesses these days, and the effective management of the performance process is just as critical, but also complicated because it involves an evolving consideration of four critical factors for any organization, according to uh, uh, Kiernley and Neely, process, people, systems, and culture. The purpose of performance management, the integration, the integral and strategic elements of human resource management concerned with getting the best outputs and results from an organization in partnership with its individual talent uh, in practice to achieve competitive advantages, changing global knowledge contexts. Any performance management process has to therefore be continuous, strategically integrated and cyclical. It must take cognizance of the context within the organization operates and consider not only short to medium term goals, but also those in the longer term time frame. A visual representation in figure 13.1 uh, kind of is a contextual sort of diagram that explains the relationship between rewarding, planning, managing, uh, developing, and, and reviewing as things align to an organization's mission. Determinants of employee and organizational performance, uh, competency of leader, contextual, contextual factors, good communication, working condition, nature of the work, reward systems, development opportunities, security, co-workers, recognition, and levels of autonomy. Uh, and looking at these from a more visual sort of representation, uh, the cognitive intelligence competencies, the emotional intelligence competencies, and the social intelligence competency lead towards leadership competencies, which impacts performance employee, which helps uh, organizational performance. Historical milestones in performance management. Uh, we start with industrialization and, cons and capitalization, uh, roughly around 1856 to 1915, the theory of economy man. Then Henry Ford along in uh, 1863 to 1947, Fordism. Then Elton Mayo, the Hawthorne experiment in social man around the 1920s. Then to McGregor, uh, there exists two unequal, a balance of employee employer power, which does not help either motivation or predicted performance output for either party. Then Drucker in 1955 about management by objectives, uh, Beer and Rube uh, in 1976 performance management, human resource management late 1980s to early 90s, performance management systems, PMS, then Armstrong around 20, 2006, which challenged the word systems and advocated process approach to PM that involves planning, acting, monitoring, and reviewing. Lowry around 2002, performance as a continuous cycle linking together performance with various human resource management processes and practices which affect employee life cycle with organizational values. And uh, Denise and uh, Pritchard, in uh, 2006, redefined performance managers, management as an interactive process as it is deemed to be fairer, leading to improve uh, the overall effectiveness of the employee. Continuing the discussion of the performance management appraisal, appraisal process, uh, in practice, Performance management typically involves the continuous process of identifying, measuring, and developing the performance of individuals and groups and organizations. And it involves providing both formal and informal performance related information to employees in the form of a formal review meeting, normally scheduled annually or biannually. 
there are five main elements involved in the process according to the CEIPD. Uh, measurement, feedback, positive reinforcement, an exchange of views, and agreement. Criticism is the lack, uh, uh, lack impact in some organizations due to how appraisals are perceived and presented in that it has little value or meaning attached. Modeling leaders and performance. Uh, conceptual push factors for leaders today achieve business objectives, meet demands of the growing knowledge economy and its associated challenges, and the ability to navigate successfully through megatrends like the individual transformation to flexibility, uh, demo uh, demography, age, demography, gender, the rapid social and economic change, and the social responsibility and sustainability. How do we do these things? Leaders are expected to execute a role which is focused on expected behaviors, refer to table 13.1, where the focus is heavily on the individual to have the ability to employ complex intrapersonal constructs in order to adapt leadership behaviors to the required context. Leaders will require development and resilience planning to face the complexities of the ever-changing business landscape. Leaders will need to have the required soft and hard skills. Leaders must learn to lead themselves. When we continue the conversation around modeling leaders and performance, uh, Table 13.1 is a hierarchical taxonomy of meta and specific behaviors. The leader meta behaviors include things like task behaviors about efficiency, relationship behaviors about commitment, and change behaviors about innovation and adaptation. Uh, leader specific component behaviors uh, include things such as short term planning, clarifying responsibilities and performance objectives, monitoring operations and performance, supporting, developing, recognizing, consulting, empowering, external monitoring, envisioning change, encouraging innovative, innovative thinking and taking personal risks. So the problems with methodology and theory often perceived that there is direct correlation between leadership effectiveness and performance outcomes in organization. Researchers trying too hard to put leaders in theoretical boxes based on specific schools of thought to align with theories and effective leadership involves a multifaceted, multifaceted approach. And basically the sum of that is that this, these things are more complex than most researchers may be willing to accept. And they oftentimes don't necessarily align totally with their points of view. So they may attempt to adjust things that don't necessarily need to be adjusted. Criticisms and paradox in performance appraisal. appraisal. Uh, PIS as, is far from neutral in intent and scope by, for of use by leaders. Lack of continuous attention provide, provided by leaders on the ongoing evaluation to ensure relevance and success of uh, the PAS. And the growth in usage of PAS has been fueled by the rise of the human resource model, uh, the decline in trade union membership and collective bargaining, and changes in work and organizational design. Gender issues and pay inequality will continue to be an issue as long as men dominate the higher earning strata in wage distribution. Disparities increase across not only receipt of normal pay role equalities, but also the ability to access performance related pay with a number of challenges faced by disadvantaged groups, gender being only one with disability and ethnicity being the others. Uh, performance uh, systems uh, represent the essence of leader follower power when related to pay and in is so doing weakens bonds of reciprocity, trust and commitment. And with that, we've reached the end of the material for this chapter. Uh, as always, stay safe and I will speak with you next week.